gonna sing this chorus and we're gonna sing that bridge. And if you can identify one unbeliever in your phone, I know a lot of y'all got a lot of them. That's good. Identify if see. This is going to challenge how much you really want people to be saved and how much you really want people to experience his love and his grace. Find one unbeliever in your phone. I want you to turn your camera, your video on. And I want a video, want you to video you singing this song. And I want you to sing to your phone like that person is in front of you. Whether it's a family member, whether it's somebody that went astray, whether it's a coworker, whether it's somebody at your school. Ask the Holy, you can even ask the Holy Spirit, who, do I, who should I send this to? Let him lead you. But we're going to just take the time, just, just 60 seconds. We're going to sing this chorus, and we're going to sing this bridge, and we're going to go buck wild. Because if you've experienced a love that you could never even imagine, why not share it with? You've experienced a love that has picked you out of your lust, your sin, your guilt, your shame. Why not share it, all right? Y'all ready? You got, you got your camera up? Don't, don't put it on me. They don't want to see me. They want to see you. Even if you don't know the words, just look at the screen and sing along. All right, we're about to turn up. Just the drums. Let's go. Yo, this is the good news. Sing it. If you're breathing, it's for you. An empty grave. An empty grave. A life that changed. It all points to Jesus.
so far to go. And with these brand new scars, this broken heart is hard to really know if there's a reason and if I'll ever see chair last week. I know it it makes no extras if you're listening on YouTube right now. <laughs> you love me we have a chair saved for you. Good morning. Are you guys ready to worship? It may just be us for this moment, but I know that I came to worship God this morning and his presence is here. It doesn't matter who else is here. The only person that matters to show up today is him. It could be, this room could be empty. And, and as long as he's here, he's all that we need. Amen. Lord, we welcome you into this place, God. I thank you, God, for your presence that is here even right now, God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, fill this room. Let your glory fill this place, God. Be magnified, God, even as we declare, God, that you're here in this room, God. Be glorified and be lifted high in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not forsaken, never alone. The God of heaven calls me his own. He's not just seated upon the throne. I know he's right here inside my home. I got a treasure here in my heart. And in my weakness, it won't depart. I have a Savior who will abide. He's not just with me, He lives inside. Just go ask Daniel if our God will bring you out and He will testify. He shuts the lion's mouth. Go ask those Hebrew boys if He'll stick by your side and they will identify the fourth man in the fight. They'll tell you. Oh, 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 he's in the room. Hey, 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 hey say. Oh, 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 he's in the room. I've got a treasure here in my heart, and in my weakness, it won't depart. I have a savior who will abide. He's not just with me, he lives inside. Go oh, ask Daniel if our God will bring you out and he will testify. He shuts the lion's mouth. Go oh, ask those Hebrew boys if he'll stick by your side. They will identify the fourth man in the fight. They'll say, Ooh. Come on, we're today. Oh, he's in the room. Oh, he's in 
search the heavens high He's there If I search the valleys low He's there And I make my bed in hell He's there No matter where I go He's there Where can I run from His spirit? He's there Where can I go from His presence? He's there Even in the deepest depths He's there No matter where I go He's there If I search the heavens high He's there If I search the heavens low He's there If I search the heavens high He's there No matter where I go He's there
I'm never forsaken. I'm never alone. No. I'm never forsaken. I know I'm never alone. I'm never forsaken. Thank you, Lord. And I'm never alone. You're never forsaken. And you're never alone. Yes, we celebrate that today. That we've not been forsaken. That God is for us and who can be against us. He has made his home within us. We are one with him today. He is not only in the room, but he is living and breathing and moving on the today. Come on, let, let the Spirit of God flow through us. Let that lion out. Come on, begin to raise up your praise to Him today. He is within us. He is within us. Oh, heaven is for us. a moment I shared this in her service but when I was giving birth to my daughter Zyra they told me that she was dead in my stomach there was no heartbeat for seven minutes and I was in complete and utter shock and I went into this table my husband couldn't come in with me I've never felt more afraid ever in my life and as I was laying on that table, I could hear my husband outside the door screaming. I was so afraid. And I told God, in that moment, if you don't walk into this room right now and show me that you're with me, I need you to come right now. And I don't know if you've ever been at a moment in your life where you had to tell God, if you're real, I need you to show me that you're real. And I know that he's real, but I needed him in a specific way right at that moment. I needed him to walk into the room and make me feel his presence. And can I tell you that he did that, that exact thing? I felt the presence of God so strong walk into that room. And I can the only way I can explain it is I heard the volume of the room came down. It was like someone just turned the volume down in the room and I felt peace I didn't feel fear anymore and I wasn't afraid and can I tell you even further than that that my baby's sitting right there on the front row and she came out and she was breathing her heart was beating they found nothing wrong with her they were astonished that she was that she was alive because the God that we serve is real and when I came out of that Psalms 23 the, 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 it says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. When I tell you that that scripture has never been so real to me in my life, there's going to be times or there may have been times that have felt, you have literally felt close to death in a situation. But can I tell you that your God is a deliverer, that he's a savior, that he's a comforter, that he's a healer, that he's a redeemer. And he never leaves us hanging. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. So whatever you need today from him, it's a situation in your life, it's a, if it's a relationship, whatever it may be, I, I dare you today 
to call upon the name of the Lord, your comforter, your keeper, your restorer, your savior, and tell him exactly what you need today because he is all things. He is the source. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. Lord, you defend me, Jesus. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled, say. I'm filled with anointing. Yes, I am. Overflowing, yes, it is no weapon, no weapon can harm me. There's no room for fear, no, I won't fear. Come on, say it with us, say, say hallelujah, hallelujah.
through Christ. See, we're not earning that, y'all. God, through Christ, gave us oneness once and forever. We never have to fear, never have to worry. Do I have it? Does he love me? Am I doing enough? We're not thinking that way anymore. What we're doing now is God wants us to celebrate the life that we have with him. What a life, man. What a life. What a, what a love. What a grace. So today, we're going to take this. Go ahead and grab your elements if you want to take part in this communion worship team go ahead and take yours we're going to lift the bread up and in scripture Jesus said take this bread representing my body that was broken that was broken and bruised for you so when we eat this today now see he died he was broken so that now we would be whole So now when we take this today, if you're sick in your body, if you feel a deficit, if you've been dealing with depression, been dealing with pressure on your life, you know, physically, spiritually, when we take this, we begin to celebrate victory that we are whole. And I claim that wholeness for my life. I claim that through the body of Jesus, the brokenness of him, I am now complete. I am whole. And I want you to believe that. I want, want you today, we stand with you, that you would feel it and not just, not just idealistically, but you would experience that fullness in your life. And so, Father, right now we lift up this way for representing your body. Your body was broken so that we would be made whole. <laughs> wow. God, thank you that we never have to walk through life and feel like we're at a deficit with you, at a deficit with anything, God. You have come to fill our life with your fullness, with your goodness, with your power. And so right now, I just come in agreement with all of us as we take this today, we celebrate wholeness and we receive all that you are into our life right now. In Jesus' name, take and receive. been a lack, God. There's a refreshing, a renewing. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you for the refreshing power of the Holy Spirit today. In the name of Jesus. Now let's go ahead and take take that cup. Lift this up. And Jesus said, take this cup representing the blood of a new covenant that we have a new covenant with God and it's not earned like the Old Testament the law but it's received by faith because of what Jesus did and so Father we thank you that this blood forgave us of our sin past, present and future once and for all this blood that you shed says that we are righteous in your name that we are sanctified and made holy. And because of that, God, your word says that we are blessed coming in and blessed going out, that the unearned favor, your favor, is upon us everywhere that we are and everywhere that we go. And I pray for my brothers and sisters today, we agree one with another, that as we take this today, if there be anything trying to stand in the way, that your blessing prevails. Your blessing prevails. In Jesus' name, let's take and receive.
Can I tell you that, that when Jesus went to the cross, that he said, let me take care of this separation forever, forever. That there would never be a thing, a person, anything that you could do that could ever separate you from your father, from the love of God. He fixed it once and for all. He fixed it once and for all. There's nothing that can come in between you and the love of God. There's nothing that could stand in the way of your relationship with God. Nothing that you could do within your power to bring separation between you and God. I don't care if you think you sin too much. I don't care if you were cussing your wife out on the way here. I don't care what has happened in your life. You are never without him because he fixed it. So he could dwell with you forevermore. Once and for all, he made you well forevermore. Forever and ever. It's forever and ever. For the rest of your days on this earth and beyond. Thank you, Jesus for fixing that, God, for forever, God, that you wanted to be with us so badly, God, that you desired for us to know you, God, and to know your love for us, God, that you went to the cross for us and endured, God, the Bible says that you endured it with joy, God, because you knew it was on the other side, God, that it was us, you and me, you and him forever. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you today. Isn't his presence so good? You're never alone. Nothing you go through, you're ever alone because he's with us. Can we give him some praise today? For the God who never leaves us. For the God who is always with us. Lord, we bless you today, God. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you today, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, welcome to Destiny Worship Center. If it's your first time here, your family now, that's how it goes. Um, hello to our online crowd there. We're glad you're worshiping with us this morning. If you want to turn to somebody, tell them they look beautiful today and say hi. And we're going to keep this thing rolling. Worshiping with us, we're so happy to see you today. Yes, we are. We're so happy to be in the house today. Where we got our worship team up here. Look at this. We got Brandon. What's up, big guy? We're so glad that you're here with us today. Welcome, online family. Nobody like the DWCLA family. Here we go behind the stage. We're coming down. We got a few new friends in the house. We're gonna go around and say hello. Let's go say. What do we got? I see some people. Hey, I recognize you. Hi. I'm going to say hi. Say hi, Monty. Let's go say hi. I see Jana in the house. What? Hi. I'm doing the camera, but I want to hug first. How are you? Good to see you. 
You guys don't know that I know this guy. Hello, sir. How are you? It's good to see you today. Look at this. We got the fam bam. What's up? There's Pete. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, we're saying hello. Hello. <laughs> look at this, everybody. Look at. Oh, we got. Oh, hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. Oh, we don't have our guy. Are we coming this direction? Good morning. <laughs> We're going live. All right. We're so glad you're here. We're going to get back up and sing a song for offering. If you're at home today, we miss you, but we know that you're with us. There's no distance in the spirit, so we're thankful that you're here today. All right. I'm going to turn it back over. Here's our, our fearless leader, Pastor Brett. What's up, fam? What's up? All right. Good stuff happening, y'all. So good. So good to be here together. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. 1130 service. And God is here. God's with us. Um, so much to be thankful for. Thank yes, you, sir. Yes, amen. So much to be thankful for. It's a new year, brand new year. Here we are. We went in, went in strong, and we got so much to expect, so much to believe. How many of you really enjoyed our guest speaker last week? Yes. You were blessed. Come on, y'all. Such a great time, solid time. And uh, he was very... Very blessed, loves being here. Now, we usually, what we usually do um, is we set a goal, and so we made that goal public when we have guests come, and what we do is we try to, of course, pay some of their expenses, and we were sharing with them because there was other churches involved, so we do the airfare, hotel, food, and stuff like that. So we had uh, a portion, and we put it up before us as a church, and the expense was 300 and then we were going to bless him with an honorarium. Now, he comes and he doesn't expect anything, doesn't come for any certain amount. But when someone comes, a gift like him that's been all over the world, he comes and he gives what he gave. We want to be a blessing to him when he leaves. So we had set our total amount was 1500 So good news. I always like to share because it was given public. We're going to share public. Not only were we able to do the three, but we were able to give him $2,300. Come on. And that's, that's us. That's us as a church. So above and beyond, that's what I love, is to set a goal and then not just reach it, but to be a blessing and to support the ministry that he is doing. And so to uh, say the least, he was really, really blessed by that. And he said to tell you thank you. And it was a pleasure to be with you. So that was last weekend. We had such a great time. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep that generosity going. We're standing with you this year, each and every one of you as individuals, as families, for your businesses, for your livelihood. God is a God who gives us, he blesses us with opportunities. And we're going to read here, the Apostle Paul was encouraging those that have, whatever you do have, excel at giving. And so I want to read this because he's not talking to people that are lazy. He's not talking to people that aren't doing something for God. But he's talking to people that were excelling in their purpose. I want to read this to you. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. And he says, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you or with one another, right? So these people, they're doing something. They're loving, they're movers, they're shakers. And yet he's challenging them to be a giver. And look what he says. See that you also excel in the grace of giving. And they had a purpose, of course, as a church, just like we do. The purpose is, of course, to make sure we... We are continuing that this church continues and that we are doing our purpose. And what is our purpose? To reveal Jesus to the world, to be an impact, to help. 
more than ever, we're so excited about our outreach and what we desire to do and show and give to our community. And uh, so, but it, it takes a team. It takes a team. So I want to encourage you this year, ask God as a part, if you're a part of this church, ask God, okay, what, what should I give? Every month, I want to make a commitment. What should I give? We have people that give 20%. People give 10%. Some people only have a specific amount. Whatever that is, whatever God speaks, I want to encourage you to ask and then make a commitment to that. Because as we do, we as a church, as a body, we actually see and we can anticipate our budget so that we can reach certain goals as a church. So if you would do that, and this is the blessed part of it, is God promises that when we sow our seed, he will multiply our seed back to us where we need it most. And I love this part, that we would be a blessing anywhere we want to be a blessing. I think for us, I know me and my wife, is we're not just thinking, we're not just praying for ourselves. But anytime we give, we're always mindful. I think if you have a God faith, a God generosity, it's not just for your family. But you're like, God, I want to believe. Yeah, there's things that we need. But, God, I want to believe for such a, such amount to be able to thrive in such a way that when somebody has a need, I'm at the grocery store, and someone can't pay for their groceries, yeah, yeah. step up and say, hey, I'll take that. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Somebody has a problem. They're about to lose their car. Hey, don't worry about it. I got you. Yeah. Well, when do I have to pay you back? Don't have to pay me back. Just take it. Yeah. I mean, to have that type. You know, a blessing, and that's been happening, I know, with many of you, many of us, experiencing on a day-to-day basis because generosity just begins to flow, and we start impacting the world around us. So I want to believe with you, as you give today, there's a few ways you can give. Uh, to your right, you can scan the Zelle code with your bank, Zelle. Uh, you can give by Zelle. Um, you can also give. The other one is for our, our church center app. You can text the amount to 84321. Text the amount to 84321. If you want to write a check, write it to Destiny Worship Center. We have a Destiny Worship Dash Center Venmo. And if you want to give cash, lift up your hand. We have envelopes right there. If you want to give, one of the other ushers will get that to you. And you can sow that seed. Let's believe. Father, I just pray for each and every family here right now in the name of Jesus. Individuals, families. As we ask you, as we believe, as we give, Father, I thank you. We agree with each of them where they need it most, that it would multiply back to where they are. And God, we just pray this year would be more than enough. Every bill is paid up. Debts are paid off. Banks are overflowing. Opportunities are happening. But most of all, God, that we could use our money to be a blessing towards others. Father, we thank you for that, and we agree in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am blessed beyond measure. I searched all over. He is my treasure. Just this and in it. 
Thank you. Coming up for Jin Now Fundraiser on February 25th. Sons of the King is meeting Friday, February 23rd here at DWC. We have a basketball tournament coming up for March Madness. March 9th, sign up today. Jersey Sunday is next Sunday. Support your favorite team. Baby dedications coming up on March 3rd. Sign up today. Praise on Purpose Worship Night, February 26th at 6 p.m. We're having a great time in our Silent Queen Book Club, Mondays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Hello, business women of God. I am Trishelle Reese, and I am so excited that I get the honor of speaking with you next Thursday, February 8th. My husband and I pastor our church here in the Antelope Valley called Destiny Worship Center. And my topic for next week's time together is worship. I am a worship leader and I am so excited to discuss and speak to you concerning this beautiful honor and privilege we have, our worship connection with God in everything that we do. So come out and join us next Thursday, February 8th, and it's going to be an amazing time together in the presence of God. All right, I'll see you guys there. Wednesday nights, we have our midweek Bible study every Wednesday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. We're having a Valentine's dinner party on Friday, February 18th in the Brim at 7 p.m. It's $30 per couple. Register for this event on the Church Center app. Grace happens here. Grace happens in us and through us. Have an So much good going on, y'all. Get involved. We're doing these things, opening doors, giving us opportunities uh, to feed, to feast off what God has given us. And uh, so we're excited. I do want to say it's the Valentine's is not the 18th, but it's the 16th. It's that Friday. Valentine's is Wednesday. So it's that Friday night. So be here. We're going to have a great time. Let's get into the word today. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Father, I just thank you for your presence already here today. You know each and every one of us, every one of us here. You know how we need to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, you know right where we are, what we're going through, uh, what we're in the middle of, what we're facing. And so, Father, I pray today that faith would come to what would be awakened, that faith would be awakened in such a way that, that we, are, we are believing, we are living, we are overcoming. God, I just thank you right now, right where we are, that you meet us. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. He is faithful. Love, not fear. Love, not fear. How we see God seeing us affects how we see everything. How we see God seeing us. How we've been taught that God sees us. How we think God sees us affects how we see, first of all, ourselves. Affects how we see God and, and eventually begins to affect how we see everyone else in our life. It's true. The, the, the God that you believe in, the God that you believe in, changes you for better or worse. And the thing that we've been finding out, this is, this is so important to settle, to really know God. To know the God of the new covenant, the Bible. To understand that God is Love and what that means. It's so important to understand this and settle this. Because I kept, even as I was praying, the reality to me. See, Jesus said one time, he said, not only will you do, those that believe in him, not only will you do works, but you will do greater works than I do. Yeah, yeah. Right. And this is what he said, because I go to the Father. And if we understand the full extent of what Christ did at the Father's command, 
that Jesus was literally the embrace of God to humanity. That he came after us because he loved us, right? When we understand that, hear this. There are assignments that we can begin to believe. Our faith is free to do the greater works. Our faith is free to begin to hear the assignments God has given us and to go after the God assignments. I mean, believe that you are worthy of it. You belong. You are gifted. You are purposed to not doubt. Does God really love me? Look what I've done. Look what I'm going through. And that's, that's, that's been the battle. I'm, I'm going to settle this today, I believe. I pray today. But for a lot of the body of Christ, we don't understand the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. M much of tradition many times has mixed both old covenant mindset with a new covenant. We try to bring them both. We, we want to serve the law not realizing that the Bible said that Christ was the end of the law. We no longer under the judgment of the law, but we are living under the power of God's grace through Christ. There's a whole different aspect. Um, and if we don't know the difference, we don't know the difference. We have a God, uh, uh, a law-based mindset of how God is viewing me. Um, we... Our faith struggles. Our faith struggles in trying to earn. We're always trying to earn God's love. Um, and, and because of that, we struggle in our love towards others. Knowing that that's the greatest mission he's given us is to love others the way he loved us. But we struggle in that love because we don't understand his love towards us. How permanent it is. How how secure it is, how eternal his love towards us is. I'm going to prove this to you in a second. And then because of that, we struggle in our faith. Am I good enough to make it to heaven? I mean, we have a generation in the church that fears hell more than they believe in heaven. And we're going to find out right here that Jesus came as a believer we shouldn't even fear hell. As a believer, you should be so secure in what Jesus did. You should know that what Jesus did takes you through this life and your ups and downs and through any judgment that would come and into eternity, you're going to be standing in Christ with Christ because you are justified by Christ. And so I want to prove that to you today. So let's get right to it. Listen, God is love, not fear. That's what we have to understand. That God is love, not fear. He's love, not fear. Here, I want to, sh I want to share some things and see the motive of what God, why God brought Christ. Look at this. Jesus came to bring faith, not fear. Jesus came to bring love, not anger. Jesus came to bring assurance, not doubt. Jesus came to bring salvation, not condemnation. Jesus came as an advocate to the sinner, not a prosecutor. Jesus came to bring heaven, not hell. We better get our message right. And we're going to see this in Scripture. The Bible says from the very beginning, he says that I so loved the world. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, right, they shall be saved. He came to save and not condemn, the Bible says. So he didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world through Christ. Oh, we got to know the motive of God. Now, I want, to take, want you to step back for a second, and let's go back to creation. Let's go back to creation. We will see in Scripture where the Bible says God doesn't just love us. God is love. God is love. Now, think about if that is true, which it is, 
Think about the very beginning. God created man as love. He created man. Now, I've heard all my life I used to hear, yeah, he created us so that we would worship him, that we would bow down and worship him. Now, look at it. I gladly bow down and worship him because he's good to me, what he's done. But I want, I want to want you to see the full picture here. If God is love and he created us, think about love. When you love somebody, love has to be shared. Why did God create us? Because love had to share. Love had to have someone to share love with. It's what I call the dance. Love needs a dance partner. Love needed a conversation partner. Love needed someone to exchange with. And if we see the very beginning of the relationship with Adam and even Eve, we see the beginning is they walk together all the time. Love has a need to share and to be one from the very beginning. What is this showing us? God is love. So therefore, when God created us, he created us in love and created us for love. Right. Now we get a bit of better picture that when Adam fractured that relationship, right, through disobedience we see, the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Jesus came as God and man, but he came to restore that love. We were created in love, for love, and that's why Christ came to restore that love between God and us and us and him. Jesus is the perfect representation of God's love towards us. <laughs> I want to prove this to you. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. We're talking about this. God is love, not fear. God is love. Not fear. Your, your faith is going to be free to live from the love of God this year. You're going to stop using your faith to earn what God already gave you th through Christ. And start using your faith to do the, the God assignments he's called us to. There's a greater work that he's called us to. And we've been so distracted by things that should be already settled in our hearts. And not just settled, but it makes you secure. It makes you confident. It makes you bold in your relationship with God. You don't, you, you're not going to fall down and stay down. If you fall down, you're going to get back up because you know who you are. Because we have moments like that. We may fall, but you're going to get back up because you know who you are and you know that you are loved of God. <laughs> First John 4, 7 through 12, let's just read this. Dear friends. Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Ooh. Now, he says you've been born of God. This love comes because you've been born of God. Remember, the Bible, Jesus taught that we've been born again. When we believe in him, we are born again. The Bible says we're a new creation. In Titus, it's, it says that we, we have a new birth there's a rebirth that takes place when we accept christ we become a brand new person that's what he's taught by here so those of us that are born of god we're born again we know him we know him verse 8 whoever does not love does not know god because god is love this is how god showed his love among us he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Now this right here is astonishing. Verse 10. Verse 10 is astonishing to me at least. He says, this is love. Not that we loved God. Not that we loved God. <laughs> but that he loved us. But that he loved loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. See, he paid by his love because he loved us. He eradicated the subject of sin. 
He paid the price and the penalty of sin once and for all through Jesus so that that would never be the subject of our relationship anymore. And so going on, verse 11, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. There's a motivation of our love towards everybody. It's his love towards us. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. In other words, it's mature. It has matured. We mean mature in our understanding Hear this, of God's love towards us, of the, the impact, of the finalization of it, of the permanence of it, yeah. of the eternity of it, of what Jesus did, how it affects our life eternally. When we understand that, we have come into maturity to understand God's love. Amen. Let's drop down to verse 16. Gets better. Gets better. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. <laughs> Here it is. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of Judgment. Give me a Christian that has confidence when you talk about judgment. You find somebody that's mature enough to understand the permanence of what Jesus did. And look why we should be confident. He says that we will have confidence in the day of judgment because in this world we are like Jesus. What does he mean by that? He means that what Jesus did, he did as us so that now we are as he is. In other words, what he did gave us his righteousness. What he did give, gave us his obedience, gave us his blessing. What he did gives us his holiness. What he did gives us the favor of God upon our life. We didn't earn this. We received it because of what Jesus did, y'all. Come on, let's give him praise. That does deserve all the glory. He deserves the glory. So we as a believer, we as believers should not fear judgment. And I know we've been taught differently. We've been taught from a different gospel, many, that we should fear judgment. No, we should, we should have faith in justification more than we fear judgment. We should believe in the work Jesus did on our behalf more. As a believer in Christ, we should know our permanence. And we're being taught that here. That's why we're spending time on this today. This is the love of God that we would know, that we would have confidence and we would understand that we are Jesus in the world. <laughs> and verse 18 gets better. Y'all ready for this? There is no fear in love. Now I want to stop. Let's get some context to this. Remember, he's talking about God's love. God's love. There is no fear in God's love. There's no fear in God's love. But perfect love, he's talking about God's love. Drives out fear. God doesn't bring fear. He drives out fear. God doesn't bring fear. He drives out fear. Right? Now listen. Because fear has to do with punishment. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Er The one who fears is not made perfect in love. That word perfect means mature. The one who fears punishment has not been made mature in understanding God's love. I'm gonna flip this mic. Let me just <laughs> let me, let me. It's right there in scripture, y'all. It's right there, it's in the Bible. John is telling us right now, he's speaking to believers. 
right? Now, what are you saying, Pastor? If you teach these things, people are just going to go out and see it. No, you aren't. Because when you know how much you've been loved, love will provoke obedience greater and deeper than fear ever did in your life. If you are only serving God because of fear of hell, you have lost the whole point. Is because of the love that he gave us that we serve him. We praise him because of his goodness. That's the truth. But it's been there. It's been there. Well, we need fear. Look at it. If you get someone saved by fear, you got to keep them saved by fear. But when somebody receives Christ by faith, by faith in what Jesus did, by faith in Jesus, Jesus, well, Jesus ain't going nowhere. Jesus ain't going nowhere, so our faith will remain. When faith is in Jesus, he ain't going nowhere. He's at the right hand of God for you. You ain't going to go nowhere. Faith is the ultimate motivation. And what faith? Faith in the love of God that is uncompromising. Never shifts and change. We shift. Well, what if somebody, see, we always go to this. What if somebody continues in sin? Well, you ask, you're asking chaos. Sin judges itself. That's not God. God saved you. Matter of fact, God many times will come in and deliver you. He delivers us from our own mess. Yeah. You don't want to walk in the same same life. I mean, once you get saved, you try to sin, you can't even sin right. You try to sin, you can't even sin. You don't look right. You don't talk right. Notice when Peter, I used to crack up, the Bible said that Peter hung out with Jesus so much that when they took Jesus away, Peter was hanging out by the fire. And they started talking. And they're like, wait a minute. You were one of the guys that hang out with Jesus. I could tell by the way you talk. And then he started trying to cast his way out of it because he was scared he going to be put up on the cross too. So he started reading the story. Peter was like trying to pretend he was trying to flex in the flesh so that they would think, no, that's not me. I wasn't with Jesus. But his, his language, who he was, couldn't be changed. He was trying to sin. He couldn't even sin right. Even people didn't believe him. <laughs> Yeah, you can't pull it off. Once you know, once you know, you ain't going to live there. The life of sin is something he freed you from. Why would you go back to something that destroyed your life? Sin still destroys, but it's not God destroying you. Don't blame the destruction of sin on God. God redeemed you once and for all through Jesus Christ. When people are prophesying, oh, look at God is judging this city or this state because all these things are happening. No, no, no. God put a rainbow up. What are you talking about? People are saying that, that, that through a storm that he's flooding these, and there's a, there's a rainbow in the sky. What does that rainbow say? The Bible said that he will never flood the earth again. That's not him. The world will be the world. Challenges will be challenged. There will be evil in the world. Come on now. Let's not blame that all on God. But God, God came to redeem us and to give us a confidence, to give us assurance because his love can be trusted. He is not like man. What he did through Christ was permanent. It was eternal and it cannot be taken from you. And then look at verse 19. We love because he first loved us. The reason why we're able to love, because he first loved us. Let me go through this real quick. So I want to break down three things. I want you to, I, I pray that you're being encouraged today that you see God for who he really is. You see God so that it will free your faith to really do the things he's purposed you to do. And settle what should be already settled in your life. Amen. So this is how we know God. This is how we know we know God. Let's put it that way. Number one, based on what we just read, we know God loves us first. You know when somebody knows God, I mean really knows the God of 
the new covenant to God through Jesus because they know God loves them first no matter what. They're not trying to earn it. They wake up in good and bad, in failure and success. They know God loves them no matter what. They're not trying to earn his love. We're not trying to earn something God gave us by grace. We're not trying to earn that. We're receiving that. Let me show you the scriptures again. Verse 9. This is how God showed us his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Verse 10. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. See, in the new covenant. Now, if you were to ask most Christians, what's the greatest command? They would say, based in scripture, they would say, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, and obey all his commands. Well, what they don't understand is that whole context was when they said, Tell us what the greatest command in the law is. And so Jesus said, so love, or Jesus told what's the greatest. They said it was, you know, again, that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and obey his commands. That's the greatest command. But what we don't realize, he was quoting the law's greatest command. But then Jesus comes and says, I give you a new command. Wait a minute. It's the new covenant command. You know what he said? He said, love, love all those around you. Love others as I have loved you. Notice, notice the change of emphasis. In the, in the law, it was about how perfect we could love God. In the new covenant, it was about how perfect his love was towards us and how it impacts our love towards others. Amen. Matter of fact, you can see 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. It says, this is the command. It's confirming what Jesus said. 1 John 3, 23. Look it up on your own. This is the command. What command? The command of the new covenant. He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and love others the way I've loved you. Woo! That is the command. Now when he says obey his commands, believe is one of his commands. Do you believe in Jesus? Now let's love others the way he loved us. <laughs> so for someone, uh, we have to understand. We have to understand this. The word love here that's being used is translated agape love, which is the God kind of love. Now understand this. Agape love is a one-way love. Agape love, God's kind of love, is a one-way love. So in other words, God was going to love us despite any reaction from us. That's why in Romans 5.8, he says, while we were still sinners, he died for us. So his love, agape love, when he came to establish a new covenant, he wasn't doing it based on our initial response. He was doing it based on his love towards us. Y'all, it's all in Scripture. How are we being taught from the new and the old covenant? we got to understand that. His love provided so much for us. His love provided forgiveness, righteousness, holiness, uh, provided eternal life that can't be taken from us. But listen, he provided life within our life now. Life within our life now. Amen. It's his love first that provokes our faith back. It's his love first that provokes our love back. You know when somebody is mature in their faith and their understanding, they know God because they know that he loved them first every day. Every day he loves you first. Dude, what a life. What a life. What a motivation provokes us to love him back and love others. The second thing that we see, how do we know we know God based on the scripture? Number two is we love others the way he loved us. All through there he said, if you know, you will love. Right? Verse seven, let's look at it. Dear friends, 
Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So you see evidence that someone knows God because they love others despite their response. Now understand, when he's telling them right here, this word gets real good. Ready? We understand and we love the fact that agape love is one way from him to us. But when he tells us to love others the way he loved us, he's using the same love, agape love. He's telling us to love others one way, that we are called to love others despite how they respond to us. See, you can't love God's way unless there, you've been born from God's love towards you, unless it's born from God's love towards you. It's very true. And I cry, you know, some people want to, we, when we talk about this, I hear people say all the time, well, yeah, you know, I love them, but if they cross, you know, that's just not the way we do things around here. There's only so much, right? And, and the funny thing is that I never heard Jesus flexing, you know, flexing in the flesh when it came to love. When he is being persecuted, Jesus never joked about flexing on people. And that's kind of like what we're doing. We, we want to flex in the flesh. Well, I love. And we laugh about it. I don't think Jesus would be laughing at that. I don't even think he'd be joking about that. Because love is business in the kingdom. Love is how it rolls from the king of kings to us. And it's how it's going to roll in and through us. That's what he's called us to. Come on, y'all. True God-born love, because it says it's born of God, True God-born love doesn't even give room for the flesh to flex. When somebody treats you a certain way, you know, we got to let them know that we're still in. Just smile at them and know that you gave them the God flex. That's the greatest flex you can give them is the God flex. Don't need to be approved by man. It doesn't need someone else to respond. That's why I always say to you, love is the strongest thing, men, you'll ever do. Love is the strongest thing, women of God, that you will ever do, especially in the face of contradiction when someone is not. It is the greatest God flex because you are doing the ultimate calling, and that is loving others like he loved you. Whew, hope you've seen it today. This is the last thing as we begin to close. Pray that you're being encouraged. Number three here. Number three. Number three. We know that we know God because we don't fear judgment and condemnation. I do want to say this, that we've already been judged. Do you realize that when Jesus died, he was on the cross? That was our judgment. That was all of mankind's judgment. That was, that was the initial judgment right there. That was the judgment that the Bible talks about. So those that accept an, the atoning sacrifice, as we just read, you're saying that when Jesus was on the cross, that was me. He paid my penalty. All my sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. Grace ain't free, it's love. Grace ain't fair, it's love. Grace ain't earned, it's received because of love. Yeah, man, it ain't cheap. It cost God everything, and he was willing to do everything for you today. When people try to make grace look, look, you know, that's soft grace. Baby, you don't even know what you're talking about. The grace of God is not weak. It is not soft. It's the, most, it's the most powerful force in the world because it picks us up every single day. It holds us up every single day. It gives us security, not only in this life, but in the life to come. 
Are you here today? Verse 17, 18, let's read this again. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love, God's love, drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. That's not God, right? The one who fears is not made perfect or mature in love. We haven't come to understand God's mature love, what he did, the completeness of it, okay? So this is how we know we know God. I'm going to ramble off a few things for you. Here it is right here. We have faith in Christ, not punishment. This is how we know we know God, for us, for believers. We have faith that God is love, not anger. We believe more in heaven than we fear hell. Hmm. We believe more in the power of Christ than we do the condemnation of sin. We believe more in the ramifications of grace than we do the ramifications of sin. Y'all, this will set you free forever, and it's in the Bible. It will secure you, power you, and move you forward. You have a message. So this is my last thing in encouraging you. Jesus removed sin from being the subject and topic of our relationship with God. Now, it's about his love for us and through us. It's his love for us and through us. He removed the topic of sin as a believer from being the subject. Sin is no longer the the, the subject to God. And that's why I always say this. God is not counting your sin. He's counting you in. 2 Corinthians 5, confirm that. 2 Corinthians 5. He said the Father was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's sins against them, but he has reconciled them. Hallelujah. And the next scripture, he says, He has given us the message of reconciliation. Amen. And it it goes on that we are ambassadors of Christ to go out to the world and tell them you have been reconciled. So you know what that's telling us? Actually, Paul right there, 2 Corinthians 5, actually gave us the message of the new covenant. We're not supposed to be going out there talking about um, God judging and God doing this. We're supposed to be telling the world that they've been reconciled. No wonder there's no faith. When someone hears they've been reconciled, faith comes. When they hear they've been forgiven, faith comes. When they hear that they're being loved, faith comes. But we have been so conditioned by fear that we believe that people need fear to get them saved because we believe fear more than we believe in the power of love. You know why? Because we don't realize that God is love. Without God, there is no love, and love is God. God is love. Love is the most powerful force in the world. And what you're doing is you're doubting that the message of love can change lives. You're doubting God himself. All right, y'all. But guess what? If you believe in that love, you've got a lot to be expected for this year. For you, your kids, your family, all that you are, you're on solid ground. Now it's time, y'all, to hear the assignment Let's be on assignment. You know what this does? You know what this does? This provokes my obedience. This provokes my faith to believe for more. This provokes me to say, God, where are you sending me? This provokes me to reach out to people in need more than ever. This provokes me to believe that if God is for me, who can be against me? God, let's go do this thing. Let's go change the world. Come on. Amen. Let's give him one more great big thank you. Thank God for his grace and his love. God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. It's so clear. It's so good. You are love and not fear. Holy Spirit, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that if there's been any burden of fear, if there's been any burden, things that are trying to hold back your people, like those questions, those doubts, I command those doubts to cease, to leave, to lift to break off the heart and the soul, the mind of your people. Father, I thank you that you came to settle that, to give us faith 
that doesn't bend. Faith and love. Lord, I pray that we would wake up with a renewed faith, renewed confidence, God, that we start treating each other the way you treated us, that we would start, Lord, going after what you've given us because we have this overwhelming confidence. This overwhelming confidence, I pray, God, arise in us, arise in us, arise in us, individuals, families, couples, in Jesus' name, parents, come on. I thank you for your grace in the name of Jesus. Pastor Trichelle. I just wanted to share something you were preaching today. I grew up um, in an Assemblies of God church, and... Um, as a kid, we, we were taught this prayer, if you know it, you know, now I lay me down to sleep and pray the Lord my soul to keep. It's the next very encouraging part of the prayer. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's funny because when he was preaching right now how the subject of our sin has been removed. Think about the countless hours and time that we spend asking the Lord to take our sin or to forgive us of sin. And it's we say we do that because we don't recognize that we are forgiven. Now when when you when something when you do when you commit something that is, you know, a sin, like what we say, like the major sin is is unbelief. He's removed that, he's forgiven us of that. But you know, sometimes we do these infractions uh, to our we sin against ourselves. We sin against others or we, you know, we do things that are are not not Christ-like but there here we are you know we're repenting and we're and we're sinning and we're spending so much time unnecessary time trying to make sure that things are okay with us and God and what he said was there is that it, it, it with that topic removed we can get on task think about I think about the countless hours of prayer that I have spent and accumulated over my lifetime trying to get forgiven of something or trying to make sure God knew I was sorry, or how much time I spent broken because of what I had done wrong. And all of those hours, all of that time could have been spent praying for my nation, or praying for my family, or praying for change, or praying for revival, or even um, building myself up. Instead of trying to break myself down to be humble and small enough so that I could be forgiven, letting my, my repentance, you know, sackcloth was sackcloth and ashes, beating myself with a chain, you know, whipping myself, trying to pay for what I was doing wrong or what I wasn't doing right, you know. Hours spent, raised that way, fear constantly. I mean, we were afraid of the rapture. We were taught when, if you miss the rapture, even if you die, you know, tonight, will you go to heaven? So much time was spent on being on that part of, of our salvation when that's not even, Jesus settled that forever. And I, when I was sitting there right now, it just, it just, it kind of breaks my heart because I think of all the things that we could be putting our hand to, we could be going up and encouraging people. We could be praying for them. We could be, our faith would be that much stronger if we could just settle this forever because it is settled forever. And I know pastor prayed for us, but I just wanna ask you right now to inventory in your own heart, like, can you settle this forever? That regardless of your behavior, regardless of what you do for the rest of your life, that this is forever settled. Can you accept that today? Can you settle that forever? Because if you can, you can start. There are so there is so much more that we need to do in the world. There's so many people that need Jesus. So many situations that need love, that need touch, that that need healing. So many sick people, so many so much devastation in the world and we can't get past ourselves to be Jesus on the earth. He said, as Jesus is, so are we. Jesus was healing this. He had this settled. Can we settle that today? And I, I just want to ask, just like, you know, like bring it into your own soul and own heart today. And if you, if you can accept that you're loved by God that way and settle it forever so that we can move on into the greater things, that we can be Jesus. When we walk, we sing that song, he's in the room. You know how I know Jesus is in the room? It's because we're in the room. 
because he's in us. We should be the Jesus walking into every hospital room. We should be the Jesus walking down Lancaster Boulevard. We should be, when they see us, they should see Jesus through us. It shouldn't be like, he's in the room. Like, we're like, where did, I don't know. No, he's, he's in here because of us. Because he's made his home in you. So when you touch, it's Jesus touching. But how are we ever going to get there if we can't even settle that? Like, why are we focusing on that? Let's settle that today. I just want to, I want to pray that over us. Father, I just ask now that you would help us. Lord, this is your help to us. Your word is your help to us. That we would settle this forever. That we would never again question our redemption. Never again question our forgiveness. Never again question that our sin could outdo what you did on the cross. Lord God, that we will never again question our salvation, but that we'll move on into the greater things of demonstrating what you've done. Lord, give us that, that strength today. Reveal your love to us, Lord, in a way that we've never seen it before so that we can walk confidently, that we can walk sure, so that we can have that blessed assurance, Lord, that they used to sing about, that Jesus is mine and that I don't have to worry. I am his and he is mine. Lord, I pray today that faith would arise in us. Faith would arise in us. That we could see how great you are in us. Lord, that we can walk as you walked on this earth and do those greater things and be at peace. Finally at peace with what you've accomplished. Lord, I pray that today for each one of us in this place. In Jesus' name, I expect supernatural things to begin to flow through our lives. I expect the dead to be raised, the blind eyes to open, the deaf ears to hear because of us walking in the room, because Jesus is in us. Let's step out. You don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. We are the answer. This world needs Jesus, right? Well, you're supposed to answer that. We're supposed to answer that because we're the vessels that he's moving through and living through. Amen. We can move forward. I'm just so thankful for this word today. Because, you know, I mean, we're walking in this. I've heard this. I've, I've, I've been preached. This word has come to me. But it's crazy to me how the layers. It's like, remember <laughs> Shrek? He was like, I'm an onion. And I've got layers. Remember? <laughs> he's like, when those layers, they get peeled back and they get peeled back. And I, here I am sitting here thinking today of the countless hours of that prayer and every service rededicating my life to how many times did I rededicate my life to the Lord it's almost it's it, it is funny it's comedic it's silly the wasted time I couldn't talk to anybody about Jesus because I wasn't sure if I was doing the right things you know I couldn't witness because I didn't know for sure if I was doing you know am I you know the I believe forever I was a tear did did you believe that? Remember the wheat and the tear? The devil tries to convince you that you're not the beloved, that you're not the son and daughter of God. And by doing that, he incapacitates you. And so it's time for that to be settled. And just sitting here today, how, how much I believe this, and I believe I'm walking in this, but here I am with another layer being revealed and the confidence, even in myself, to step out regardless of what's going on. And I encourage that in you today to be free from that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for giving me your time. So glad you shared that, baby. Awesome. All right, y'all. We'll have our prayer partners up here to pray with you if you need specific prayer. Let's say our motto. This is what we say we believe as a church. Say it. Grace happens here. Grace happens in us and now through us. All right, you all. We love you. Bring somebody back next week. And uh, remember, uh, PT, you ladies, business women of God, Thursday morning, 830. She's going to be sharing there. And uh, yeah, man, we have a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Next week, bring your sports apparel, your jerseys, your hats, your favorite teams. Oh, God, uh, yeah, these two right here. Okay. 49ers. You deserve it this year. All right. <laughs> so bring it. We're going to do Jersey Sunday, both services. We love you all. God bless. Have a great week.